Hi friends, welcome back to Frosty Eye Candy. And it's our celebratory 50th video. So I'd like to give a quick shout out to uh, my group on uh, Facebook, Acrylic Pouring for Beginners, my fellow admins, Kirsty, Bridget, and Darren, and not forgetting our main Amun G. Thank you very much, guys. I couldn't have got this far without you. And I also couldn't have got this far without all of my subscribers. So I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for your support and your nice comments. Um, it means the world to me, it really does. And it gives me the energy to keep on going and keep on making more videos. So thank you. So, you know, again, da 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 da, pouring medium, pillow paint and cell activator from the little pictures at the beginning. I'm gonna run through the colors with you. So, first up, for this beautiful flower on a vine, we are using Rust-Oleum again, and this is their gold mine. This is a fantastically highly pigmented paint and uh, is fantastic for our piggies to sit up on top. So, now we have this beautiful selection of piggies. Now, uh, here we go, this one is S'mores. It is gorgeous, gorgeous. A deep brown, shimmery kind of effect to it as such. Again, hard for the camera to pick it up, but S'mores. And this is going down on top of the gold mine. And then the next one, this is, yes, seaweed. Uh, again, another new piggy for me. I haven't used it much, but a beautiful, beautiful green with a lovely gold kind of shimmer to it. So that's seaweed, and that's going down on top of the s'mores. And then the last little piggy in this lineup, this one is asparagus. It's a, as you can see, beautiful, another lovely lighter green color with again, a beautiful kind of gold shimmer to it. So that's sea, uh, asparagus. So s'mores, seaweed, asparagus. And then on top of that, I'm just gonna lay down a little bit of uh, the Amsterdam white, uh, titanium white acrylic. I mixed it up in my pouring medium and I just put a little drizzle of that down first so the white cell activator sits on top of it and doesn't sink so fast because we're using three piggies in a row. So that's for the vine part of the actual uh, picture. Now for the bloom part of the kit picture, we're using a little bit of the Rust-Oleum again. So we've got a uh, opaque paint, uh, tube paint as such going down first. Then, using another new piggy for me. This one is Pinwheel. This is a fantastic, beautiful lavender color with a gorgeous blue flash. Oh, there you go. Got the camera to pick it up. Uh, but a new piggy for me. Uh, and I would like to thank my wife as well, who spoiled me rotten and um, bought me all the pigs I didn't have. <laughs> I'm very, very fortunate and very, very lucky. And must give a shout out to my gorgeous wife, Sean, for such a lovely Christmas present. Anyway, that's Pinwheel, getting sidetracked and uh, just waffling on. Next one, it's Watermelon. This is beautiful, beautiful, uh, kind of light pinky red color. Obviously very much like Watermelon, but has a beautiful gold shift to it. I'm trying to see if I can get the camera to pick it up. It's difficult, but anyway, that's watermelon. That's going down on top of the uh, pinwheel. Then we are putting down just a little bit of this. This is the permanent blue violet by Amsterdam. Just a little thin drizzle so we haven't got too many pigments sitting on top of each other. And then the last pigment we're going to use for the bloom is this gorgeous new piggy for me again. It's Venus. So it's this gorgeous, gorgeous, dusty kind of pink color with a golden hue absolutely stunning stunning pigment but that's uh, the last one uh, or the last color as such and then again with the bloom like i did with the vines i put down just a little bit of the titanium white mixed up in the pouring medium just to give the cell activator something to hold up on because it will sink really quickly through the pigments on their own okay that's it i'm getting dry mouth from waffling on i'm gonna zip it gonna get the camera pointing down and we're gonna start painting okay friends so the first thing I guess I should say is that we're working on a 13 inch canvas here guys. And the first color I'm putting down there is the Rust-Oleum Goldmine. It's a very highly pigmented paint and makes for a great opaque base for the rest of our colors and piggies. You'll also notice that 
I'm stopping around about a third of the way from the edge of the canvas because anything we put any closer is just going to get spun off when we remove the excess paint by spinning. So this next gorgeous colour I'm laying down here, this is T.O.P, this little piggy, and this one is called S'mores. It's a beautiful, beautiful, deep, rich, metallic chocolate colour. And again, is a great base on top of the Rust-Oleum gold mine to kind of give a bit of a mm, viney effect, you know, the actual kind of branch that the vine has. Now I'm going to stop waffling and the next colour, this one is seaweed. Gorgeous, gorgeous green colour. It's very metallic, very shimmery. And I think when we mix that one with the seaweed, or no, sorry, this is the seaweed, the asparagus we're going to put down next gives a great kind of depth to the bloom vine and really gives it a kind of leafy feel. I think anyway. So there, as you can see guys, we're putting less and less down each time. We don't want the last colours we use to overtake. Excellent. Now this is the uh, Amsterdam Titanium White. Just mixed up in my pouring medium. Just to give the cell activator we're going to put on top something better to sit on rather than sink immediately immediately through the pigment and here we go with the Shelly Art cell activator recipe if you'd like to know what the Shelly Art course is and what the activator is please in the details of this video I have details for her online course and a 15% discount code Okay then friends, so we're starting to blow the vine out. Now, a good thing to remember is when we finally spin this out, the whole thing is going to expand. So we don't need to do lots and lots of little blow blooms along the side. Just about half a dozen or so is great because when we spin the piece, they're going to expand and give us some great composition. Wow, I am very impressed and <laughs> very happy with that, even if I say so myself. I really couldn't have had it work any better. To me, uh, they really do look like vines, but please, if they don't look like vines, tell me what you think they look like. The comments are active in this video and you can tell me what you think. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm just gonna do some final touches, little little blowouts of the cell activator and the pigments here and there just to get a kind of pleasing, pleasing shape and symmetry to the piece. Excellent, I'm loving those cells in the middle. And we've got some beautiful cells spinning out either side of the vine, that's great. Couple more blows on the cell activator there. Try to break, break it up and get it to sink. And we're gonna do a few little modifications. Now I always like on pieces like this and uh, on little areas just like that that I've modified. I love dragging a line into them because I feel it makes them look a little bit more like a leaf and uh, maybe even a little bit like a ginkgo leaf. The tricky thing with modification is knowing where to do it and where to stop. <laughs> I also like doing a couple of these little lines coming out because again to me they look like the little tendrils from an ivy vine or something like that. It just gives it a little more of an organic feel, makes it look a little bit more like a vine. So just adding the last few little Modifications here and there. I can't remember when I stopped, so. <laughs> I think we just had a couple more little bits here and there, and then we're going to go for the bloom. 
Now there's two ways you can actually do this bloom vine technique. You can lay the vine all the way down, or sorry, the vine all the way through the uh, background of the piece, let's say, or you can actually leave a break wherever you actually want to do a bloom, uh, which is quite a great way of actually doing it because you have a negative white space behind the bloom to really show it off nicely. And I think some of the next ones I try, I'm going to try that style. But with this one here, I just pour the paint straight in the middle, straight on top of the vine, and we do the bloom. So while we're just waiting for me to finish doing these modifications, I would love to give a shout out to my group on Facebook, Acrylic Pouring for Beginners, and a shout out to the main man, Amun G, my friend Christy, my brother Darren, and my good sister, Bridget, all of the admin team from the Acrylic Crazy Train, and also lots and lots of other artists there. Sheldon, Shannon, Charmaine, Michelle, just to name a few. So here we go. We're laying down some of the Rust-Oleum gold mine. Just a small amount, friends, remember, because we don't want the bloom to be too big, because when we spin it, it will grow the same as the vine. And we don't want the bloom to be too large, too larger than, than the actual vine. We want it to be in proportion. Here we go now. This is the beautiful color of the new one for me, the pinwheel. Gorgeous lavender color with a blue flash. And now the gorgeous TLP watermelon. Beautiful, beautiful watermelon color with a gold flash. Now we're putting down just a thin little amount of the uh, Amsterdam standard acrylic. That's the permanent blue violet. That's the tube paint. Just to give this last piggy something to sit on. And this one is the beautiful piggy Venus. So now I'm just going to put a tiny, trying to put as thin a drizzle as I can of the titanium white opaque paint again just to give the cell activator we're just about to put down on top of it something to sit on so it doesn't immediately sink through the pigments below. And here we go for the blowout. <laughs> Excuse the back of my head while I do this, friends. <laughs> so, the initial blow and the initial bloom didn't come out as planned, but when do they ever? So uh, let's look at this and figure out how we can make it work. And again, excuse the back of my head, friends. So a couple of extra little blows with the uh, cell activator in the middle trying to get it to break up and sink down through the colors and give us some more cells. And while we wait for that to happen, we're going to do some modification and get these, get, get these edges looking a little more like petals. So in we go for the first modification. So when I do my modifications, guys, sometimes I'll let the toothpick go all the way through to the pillow of the paint, depending on what I'm trying to modify. But when we're trying to do these uh, blooms and modify the blooms to make them look a little bit more like petals, you want to very carefully just drag the top layers of paint. If you go through all the way to the bottom, you run the risk of bringing the white pillow paint up and through, and we didn't really want that. But action, excellent. A couple of little modifications, and the flower's looking a lot more like a flower. You can see the cell activator has sank nicely in the middle, giving us those cells. So the whole piece is working nicely. Let's just hope I don't mess up the modifications. 
So I think it's looking pretty good, but we're gonna do a couple more just to try and get all the petals to meet in the middle. And it was tricky and difficult. So as you can see, I ended up doing a small little spiral in the middle of the flower to actually make the center. And I don't think it worked too badly. So in we go for the first spin. And I'm leaving the spin in real time, friends, again, so you can see how long and for how fast I actually spin my pieces. I let my pieces spin for a little bit longer than uh, some other artists, just because I like giving the paint a good chance to meet the edge and flow nicely over the edge of the canvas. But we can see the pieces expanded nicely already. And just as I said, the two edges of the uh, vine have already met the edge of the canvas and we're more than likely going to lose some details there unfortunately but that's the nature of fluid art so a nice close-up guys it's looking good as it is already but we've still got lots of paint on there and we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get it off just tilting it one way just to even out the paint and giving you a nice chance to see the shimmery piggies and then we go for the second spin Again, keeping it real time so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. We can see the pieces really expanding nicely, but we have lost a little bit of the vine already, but we knew we were gonna do that. Wow, in for a nice close up. I am so happy with how this came out. I'm very fortunate indeed, wow. You can see how the cells are just nicely stretching over the edge of the canvas. I love that. But we've still got quite a lot of paint there, friends. We're gonna have to give it another spin. And again, letting it spin a little bit longer than usual because I like to give the paint a good chance to meet the edge of the canvas and go over the edge and give us some nice cells in details on the edge of the canvas too. But, wow. So, just giving another shout out to my group, Acrylic Pouring for Beginners, while we give you a nice close up there. And we're going to give you a nice close up of the shimmery pinwheel and the Venus in the flower there. So thank you, my friends, for joining me. Please like, subscribe and share. And as always, Happy pouring.